uh, welcomed our viewers and introduced this episode of EPP Family Talks. Uh, we're so glad on this Labor Day to be able to speak with you, longtime member of the European Parliament, the president of the European Union of Christian Democratic Workers, and as I mentioned to our audience, somebody who for many years has contributed an enormous amount to the EPP family. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you for inviting me. We've started all of these EPP Family Talks episodes with our other EPP leaders by asking them just a, a personal question, which is during this time, this unusual time uh, of lockdown, when everybody around the continent basically has been at home, things have been shut down. How have you been doing? How have you I've been, been coping? Fine. Uh, I do a lot of video conferences, a lot of telephone calls, try to read and uh, look after my small family as we can live here. It's a pity that I cannot see my grandchildren, uh, but I live here with my wife, my new young dog, and my 100 years old uh, mother-in-law, who is the most healthiest one of all of us. Well, that's very good news. What kind of dog is it? A Labrador. Very nice. Yeah. What's what's his name or her name? Kira. 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 Excellent. Oh, third, third Labrador. Well, uh, looking beyond your own family, we've asked also all of our leaders just if they would update us on what's happening in their home country. Of course, your country, Germany, is led by Angela Merkel from your party and from our biggest member party, the CDU, the Christian Democratic Union. So could you give us an update what's happening in Germany now? Well, the situation in Germany is quite difficult, uh, but compared to other countries, uh, quite comfortable. And uh, we have to see that uh, now my picture is gone. No? We hear you fine. I don't know what's happening with the picture, but we hear you fine. No, no. Just, just I would suggest just, just go ahead, Mr. Walk, because yeah. I think, I think I we see over. that uh, I keep my hands before my mouth. Uh, I do not know what is that. Uh, the, 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 we the, are in a situation from... that uh, we have around 160,000 infected people, uh, but around 6,300 dead dead people. Uh, that we have compared to other countries, a relatively good situation. What I believe is also a reason that until now, the Germans followed very much the leadership of Angela Merkel, but provided also by other uh, state prime ministers we have, because most of the responsibility for health system, for decisions about lockdown and so on, are done on the levels of the 16 states. But uh, with the small differences, uh, there is always under the leadership of Angela Merkel an agreement between the 16. And, uh, but we have now this debate about uh, our future uh, exit strategy, which is a very difficult one because nobody knows exactly how this virus will go forward. It's the danger of a second wave, how fast it can be done. There are a lot of different opinions, but more or less it goes in the right direction, I believe, and I hope uh, that we continue in that way, case, that we can stay in such a relatively comfortable situation. But people become now nervous. Uh, small and medium-sized companies, shops are open now, but uh, uh, restaurants uh, and other questions are not open, and that we see that many are afraid of their economic future and social future. We have a relative good system that we have this possibility that uh, the companies can keep their workers and most of the money for that is paid by the state. And uh, this means uh, that uh, the companies could start immediately again when it goes, uh, when it's the situation that we uh, are comfortable enough to believe uh, that uh, uh, the virus uh, is uh, so much down that it does not come to the mass pandemic. You mentioned several. You mentioned several kinds of businesses or kinds of 
of people employed who have been affected in particular ways by this crisis. And so I thought maybe I would transition now to ask about your role in particular as president of the European Union of Christian Democratic Workers. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, could you, well, first of all, maybe would you tell us a little bit about the organization itself? What is its purpose, its raison d'etre? And then, and then maybe what are some of the particular challenges facing workers right now during this pandemic? Look, we had uh, in uh, many parties of the EPP, not all of them, the tradition that we have a trade union wing, a workers wing. And uh, this is, uh, makes us as, as uh, CDU, for example, or CSU, do, as we uh, call it, a real people's party, that all parts of society are part of us. And uh, therefore, we try to strengthen this position in our member countries, in our party, in our family, in order to make clarified as a people's party that we want to keep the society together under our values. But to these values belong also the question of solidarity. Subsidiarity and solidarity are the two things which come from the Catholic social teaching. Everyone is responsible for himself but he had, carries also responsibility for the weaker ones. And that, that is the way how to we cooperate together and make a, a society where human being comes first. And the value of the core human being comes first. What would you say are some of the particular challenges facing workers now during this pandemic? Look, it depends very much on the social system that we see that in countries where we have a good social system, it's not so dramatic uh, as it is in countries where there absolutely no uh, social uh, 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 security. When I see, for example, the situation in the United States uh, where you are immediately unemployed, uh, you can be fired in a minute in such a crisis. If we see that, especially in such circles, many people die because they have not the situation, uh, the, 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 the health system, which will give the uh, right help. In the United States, is especially the African-Americans who die. And uh, that, uh, therefore, to have a society of solidarity, a social dis uh, system where uh, the health system function the chances for uh, workers are much better to survive in such a crisis and also to have a living which makes it possible for them to look after their families. Are there particular solutions now, positive stories, particular solutions which you're seeing now at, at EU level, which you think people should be aware of, which we should be highlighting? Look, we have to see that this is a global crisis with a global effect, but also with a global origin. I mean, that's and it's the virus. Virus, a virus does not know frontiers. And therefore we have to find them together to look uh, how we can, uh, can contain them. Uh, to contain them just in that way that I close my own uh, borders alone will not help us in the long run. Uh, we have to come uh, together and do, do treatments jointly, to learn from each other. Uh, multilateral systems are important. Uh, Mr. Trump's fight against IMF or uh, the World Health Organization is disastrous in this question. We have uh, to uh, develop uh, an vaccine, uh, the real uh, situation to solve this problem only if we such a uh, vaccine is uh, found. And here we have to see how can we have uh, licensing uh, pat patents? How can we have a joint fabrication for billions of, 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 uh, uh, of injections we, we need at the end of the day? And here we need a close cooperation. And uh, also we have to look uh, for a European and global level for the economic uh, result. Uh, I tell my friends in Germany, we might be quite well off, 
as a relatively rich country with a functioning system under good government. Uh, but the uh, German economy cannot uh, have a proper exit strategy if Northern Italy goes bankrupt. Uh, we, uh, a German uh, car cannot build without certain products from France, Italy, or Hungary, or Romania. And so therefore we have to understand that this shock, which is not, uh, where not an individual country is responsible for, can only be solved with a common way to solve it. And it means that the programs which are decided now, first the decision by European Central Bank, but also 240 billion euros done uh, via the Commission, uh, short-term workers uh, help, uh, the EIB uh, money, the uh, credits from the European stability mechanism are quite very good, but it will not enough for the European recovery. We have to look much more possibilities. I have my doubts that the discussion at the moment then via the European budget, it can be done that amount. And therefore I must say that it means also that we should discuss much more that for a special case for a short-term special bonds could be possible as part of such an arrangement. Let's give me one example. Italy has to refinance 300 billion euros this year of old debt. Italy wants to do that alone. But if the interest rates for Italy goes uh, too far up, they cannot do that. But it will go far up if Italy has to ask for new credits. So therefore in the next months, we have to come to solutions that our countries themselves are strong enough that they can do this refinancing. And here I think uh, uh, the Brussels institutions together with the European Central Bank have to find b uh, solutions on top of that, what was already thankfully is done. I have just one more serious policy question for you. And in the meantime, I would also say welcome to Simon, welcome to CDU Bielefeld and all of our other viewers. And my, my final policy question is, as somebody who has many years of very high level political experience in Europe, and I think as somebody that everybody in the EPP family would recognize, always brings a great deal of wisdom and perspective and insights to discussions as we've already experienced in this particular conversation. If you had to imagine, you know, the perspective looking back at this moment, 30 years from now, 40, 50 years from now, what is your best guess as to how future historians will look back at this particular moment? Look, always Europe was strong when it was in a moment of crisis together. It's painful because there's compromises needed. But we will see next week, 75 years after the Second World War and 70 years after the Schumann Plan, 9th of May. And uh, I really have my thoughts nowadays that exactly five years after the Second World War, the French, the Italians, the Benelux countries took Germany, which uh, did so nasty things to the world, took them as equal partners, which was the basis for our recovery. And I think that when we have this uh, pandemic is now the biggest challenge since the Second World War. We should remind ourselves that we should be able to do so. Also in the German discussions, we do do so in order to find a common approach. We alone, no, all country and member countries alone will not survive this situation perhaps in the way of the health systems at the end of the day with more or less dead people, but not for recovery. If we do not stick together and join our forces socially and economically, the Chinese and others will take over here. That is a similar challenge as it was after 45. And therefore, let's do that utmost. And I think we should have a much more broader debate in such a depth as we have at the moment in this day-by-day -day discussions at home. It is always very valuable to be able to hear your perspective and ideas. So thank you for that. I had just two more 
more informal personal questions, sort of uh, similar to the first one we asked you. And the first one is, is there a particular historical figure which comes to mind that you find helpful, inspirational to think about in, in such a time as this? Look, for me, always I belong to this generation. It's Helmut Kohl, no doubt about it. Mm. He was a leader who took risks in order to come to the right results. And uh, there was another one, uh, I've met so many people, but there was another one that was John Paul II, a man uh, who has a moral attitude, but he was a very wise man too. And he was, these two persons, with Jacques Delors and others together, were the people united Europe. And I think if you have that courage, that wisdom again, it will solve these problems too. And the final question, and it's not unrelated maybe, but is there something you've been reading or watching recently which you find particularly interesting or helpful that you would recommend? I must say I have read in the last three weeks less than before because of all the other political reading I have to do at the moment and the conference I do. Uh, but I would like to say that there is a book which is written uh, about the start of the First World War. It's already two, three years old, this book. Christopher Clark, about mm -hmm. the beginning of the First World War. I can recommend that anybody. Again. Is it called Sleepwalkers or something like this? The, the, the Schlafwandler, it's called in German. Yeah, I think in English it's Sleepwalkers, yes. No, sleepwalkers, yeah. And uh, this shows how easy things can go in a different directions, in a direction nobody wants to have if you do not react in a responsible way. Do not see uh, what might happen if you do not make compromises and come together. And I think we are not in the same situation as 1914. But uh, the thinking out of that, what could be avoided if we would have a longer term thinking as we do sometimes, uh, would be so important for Europe. Well, Mr. Elmar Brock, president of our association, the European Union of Christian Democratic Workers, longtime member of the European Parliament and friend of the EPP, thank you so much for sharing your perspective and ideas. Um, thank you for your time and thank you for the work that you're doing. We apologize for these technical difficulties, but as we expected would be the case, uh, and knew would be the case, you've given us a very content rich discussion. So we appreciate that a lot. Thank you. And thank all you to, to you and to you as well. Thank you to all of our viewers. Uh, please tune in again next time for our next episode of EPP Family Talks tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Saturday on Facebook. We will be speaking live with Vice President of the EPP, Vice President of Forza Italia, and Member of the European Parliament, Antonio Tajani. See you then.